Music is the key to unity. No matter who you be, you must dance. Blessed love, this is Queen Omega picking up Maria Jackson Entertainment. Midday in Jamaica, you don't know. Blessings. Ooh, Trinidad and I, Sando and I. Okay, so for those that don't know, we know say you are the, 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 the queen of reggae in Trinidad, but for those that don't know, introduce yourself and make the people know who exactly is Queen Omega. Well, um, greetings and blessed love. I am a humble youth hailing from South Trinidad, that San Fernando where I, keep, where I born and grow and, you know, still live. Um, I grew up listening to a lot of different genres of music, but I think my the music that I love the most is dancehall. And at the time when I started doing music, from I was very young, I started doing music professionally. I would say, let's say, 14, because I got the opportunity to work at the studio from a very young age. So I started working in my music studio doing background vocals, then I got the opportunity to blossom into being a vocalist. So I was born with this voice and I always love music and I always love singing and I chose to do reggae music at that time because no one was doing reggae music and I was in a country where it was only strictly soca and, you know, calypso and I just wanted to be different. So I chose to do reggae music and that's why I get the name. Queen Omega from all the elders in the rest of Fearing community where I grew up. All right, so my understanding is that your mother played a major role in your career from the beginning. So talk to us a little bit about your mom, what she means to you, and the role that she played in getting you started in the whole music thing. Bless the love, mommy. Well, my mom, first of all, I can say my mom, she's my best friend, you know. It doesn't have nothing about me that my mom doesn't know. I mean, she knows all my secrets. I confide in her because I get strength from her. She was always my, you know, main support growing up because I, I'm the only girl amongst four boys. So having a daughter who is talented, you know, and who can sing very well, I guess she saw that, you know, she had to be involved, you know, pushing me, supporting me. She was always there from that time when I was, I could remember doing um, 12 and under. That's the first local t TV talent show that I entered. She was there, mom was there. For party time, mom was there. I was about 15, 16 years, she was there. She was always there. I think my first, my second trip to London when I started working on my album, mom was there. Mom record, she, she, have, she have done a lot of recordings, background vocals on my um, albums. She, she, she's, she was always there and she still supports me. And I just wanna say, Blessed love to all the mothers because um, she's my backbone, if it's so to speak. My friend, that. Right, so when you started out um, in this whole music thing, you were into a lot of calypso and you were into a lot of rap. Now, the calypso, we understand because it's Trinidad, Trinidad. But, but where the rapping thing come from? Um, well, as I said before, you know, I, I didn't have a choice, you know, because I could have sing. I could have really sing. I don't think I could sing. No, like how I could have sing then, you know. And I was always involved in music at the time. I remember I was I was part of a group called Foxhole Entertainment. I was really young, I was about 14, 13, 14, 15, around that time and it was um an all genre group. So we had R and B, we had rap, we had reggae, dancehall and me being me, I would just get involved in everything, and I guess that's why I, I, I was involved in hip hop. I still love my little hip hop. I could still rap a little thing, but you know, you know me, I'm, I'm a reggae queen, so I try to keep it that way. 
can you, I, my understanding is you did a lot of background vocals for some, some soca artists when you started out. Like that's your foundation in this whole thing. Well, that's how I get into the music. You know, that's how I get the opportunity to come out as a, as a solo. Because, you know, um, I always get that push, being a mommy, you know, and um, going to the studio, do your works. I used to make money doing it, you know, so it was really a nice opportunity as a teenager to be able to go to the studio and work and earn a money. So when I go to the studio, I had the opportunity to work with nearly all the, the big names in the soca in Trinidad, you know. I work with a lot of them. Even, I can remember even Jam Mason at the time came to the studio and I was like, ah! I was, I was crazy. I was 16 years at the time. I was like, oh gosh, Jack, you're in the studio. Jack, you're coming in the studio. And I was like fixing myself because I know he's a Rasta man and I know I have myself looking good. And I remember that evening when he finished with his session, I was still in the studio and he was having me sing. He was like, boy, your voice, but sing it this. You can't sing a Whitney for me? Sing a Whitney. And I was just singing, singing, singing because he just loved my voice at the time. And I wasn't even, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't get any Queen Omega yet. I was just about to blossom. Can you tell us some of the soca artists that people are familiar with now that you've done work with back then, like whether on stage or in the studio? Um, just to name a few. I work with Iowa George. I work with Naya George. I work with even Marshall Montano. I worked with a lot. But just to name a few of the big names, those are the names. All right, let's switch up gears for a little bit now. Let's talk about your way of life. Okay. Rastafari. I mean. Let's get into that. Now, um, is, this faith, is this a faith that you were taught as a child? Like, did you grow up around Rastas? Or is it something as an adult you decided, you know what? This is the way I want to go with my life. Well, I didn't really grow up around Rasta per se, you know. It had Rasta friends in my community. There were a few elders that I knew about. But it was a calling. It was a strong, strong calling. You know, it was like a magnetic pull. And growing up in a Christian background, because I grew up in a Christian background, um, I was always prompted to pray, you know, trust in the most high, make the most high a friend, them kind of things. So it wasn't strange that for me to adopt Rastafari because being the Afrocentric woman that I am, there was no other way for me to, to, to you know, grasp the love of the Almighty and put it within my liberty, you know. Please the most high with the way that I eat, the way that, that I drink, the way that I dress, the way that I speak. It, for me, it was about that because it was a, like, it was a higher consciousness. It was like a wake up. It was like my eyes were being opened or my pineal gland was being open, if so to say, you know. So, and it worked for me. When I, I remember when I stopped eating meat and I started chanting Rastafari and I started to get into the scriptures and I started reading more, studying more, documenting. And my mom, my mom again, she was like, I don't know nothing about this Rasta thing, but since I realized that years want, you want to be a Rasta woman, and I was about six, 17 years, really. She said, I've seen a change, and I've seen a positive change. So she said, well, if this is the way you want to serve the Almighty, if this is the way you want to serve God, I'm not going to condemn it because I'm seeing good. I'm seeing good. You're dressing different. You're into your Bible more, and I love that about it. So if this is what you want to do as a Rasta woman, if this is how you want to serve your God, and she never, she always supports me. She always support me. I remember one time I was in London and I was building a tune and I said, Mommy, build up a split for me now, please. I don't want to stop the vibes I flow. And she just gave me this look like, hmm, you're asking your mother to do that. And she did it. She actually did it. You know, and it's, it was a bang. <laughs> so, you know, give thanks to moms again for the support in that kind of way. Okay. So, um, c correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think you did three albums while you were with Mikey D. Three albums with Mikey D in the early 2000s, but then about mid-2000, you were working with a new team. Is All it right, it yeah, you could say it like that. 
Okay, so, so, so here's the question though, here's the question. The question is, what happened? Why did you move away from, like, I don't even know if you moved away, but, but somehow you stopped working with Mikey D and you were now with growth, some guys. Growth, growth, it's, this is life. I mean, you, sometimes you meet people and it doesn't mean that they have to be with you for a lifetime. Sometimes you meet somebody and it was just for that moment. They walk with you for a moment. They walk with you for a mile. They walk with you for many miles, you know, and Mikey D, we're still in contact. Every time I go to London, I link him. I don't think it had any bad vibes. It was just that I needed to move forward. And at that time, they had brought me to that point, And I didn't think they could have moved me forward. And I just had to do what I, I, I had to do. I just had to get my name out there. Okay, how did you connect with, is it Boast, Boast and Bim? Boast and Bim, yes, yeah, special delivery. How, how did that connection, make, how did you make that connection and what was it like working with them? Because I remember, I remember back in the days I was living in Canada at the time, special delivery was the big thing out of, out of France. Mm, it was. So how did you, how did the connection make, what was it like? Well, magic, music is magic. I think they heard through the grapevine, there's this bad empress from Trinidad who's working on an album, tearing up the place in London. At that time it was just, word was going out and they came to see me, I was working on my album, I was, and they proposed to do an album with me, and I was glad because this was my stepping into France, they coming from France, you know, and me not even stepping into Europe, don't know nothing about French, nothing, I was like, yeah, this is opportunity, so I grasped it, and we did that album, and that album, whoa, it was a really good album, really good, because no one, I didn't have nobody telling me what to do, how to do it. I was just being me, doing me, having fun. And that was the product, special delivery. Special delivery. Um, boy, that album, that album, Destiny Boy, that album, tough. I enjoyed that album. That one of my favorite albums, one of my favorite works, because not everything I do, I, I read. Some of my works, I'm like, boy, I don't like that too much, you know. But... It's just reality, it's truth. Okay, so I know you've done um, you've done a collaboration with Bojo. Yes. Which which other notable Jamaican artists have you collaborated with? Anthony B. Mark Wanda. Um Kipperton, Sisla, Phil Mark, who else? I think I'm forgetting some still in you know. Who else? I say Anthony B, I say Sizzla, I say Capleton, I say Mark Wanda. Oh yeah, from the Taurus Riley, way Chesy Deck. Yeah, I, I, um, if I'm forgetting anybody, all oh, please forgive me. It's been a long time, there's a lot of words. But I'm thinking those are the big names. Yeah. I love that you say it's a lot of works. <laughs> so based on just that one line, it's a lot of works. Can you tell us approximately how many albums you've done? over your career so far? Should I mention the unreleased ones? Well, five. Five. Queen Omega, Pure Love, Away From Babylon, Destiny, Servants of Jam. So, so let's switch it up and talk about something that's near and dear to me personally. Okay. Um, as a female in this business, what are some of the challenges you've encountered? You know, you've had a long career so far, mm -hmm. but you know a lot of women coming up right now, and I know probably like me, they want to hear from somebody like you. What are some of the difficulties and how have you overcome them? Well, first of all, I don't want to say difficulties, you know, I mean, life is full of, full of ups and downs. I've been to, sh I have performed and never been paid. I'm not the only artist that go through that. Man go through that as well. I don't think women alone go through it. But what I can say is that for me, I've had a strong start. And because of that, I've been respected. I have never, you know, when I touch stage show, I remember the time when I was traveling was just me. It wasn't really no women. Hardly any woman was out there. And it was just me, one poor, poor me, one little woman. But... I would walk with this boldness and assurance, you know, with my chest high up to the sky. 
So when them man them see me, them know say a lioness I come. So them just a blessed love empress. That's all. You know, I get that respect and I care about myself. Boy, my self-esteem high, if it's so to speak. My self-esteem is high. I'm not arrogant. I'm not proud. It's just that I am on a mission. I know what I'm about. And I know there's nothing going to stop me. And I always care about myself like that during the years. And because of that, there's a lot of doors been opened. And even if a door has been closed, I look around the corner because me no say there's another opening. Because when one door is closed, many more open. So I, didn't, I wouldn't say I face a lot of difficulties, man. And I, I trample all them things. We just cut and go through. And bad vibes, we just, we just, just no even study it. We just go through it like nothing. Because I've been through a lot of stuff, too. <laughs> I've been through a lot. Stuff that I can laugh like I'm laughing. But at the time, it wasn't laughter. And... All that helps build you as an artist because it's the road, it's a road you're upon. And when you study a road, it's enough bumps upon the road, you know. Speed bumps, speed bumps, you have to slow down. Sometimes a smooth pave and you're gone, and sometimes like a rock dip on the road, you have to slow down and turn. And so that's what I've been doing all the while, just trying to keep my name out there and make people them know, say, listen, you know, me get there and I'm mean, not stop, I make mean, can't stop. So we talked about, we touched on, you know, some of the challenges as a female. Can we now switch it to a more positive side where we look at what are some of your most memorable experience so far as a female artist in this industry? Well, um, I love being able to meet and greet with other artists and share the energy, you know, work on, you know, songs, collaborations. I love that. I also love... The energy that you get when we went when you're at a festival and you're there amongst the producers, media personnel, artists, musicians. I love that because I'm in my element. I'm in my space. I feel productive. I feel like just like who someone who goes to a nine to five and come home from afternoon work. So me feel when me amongst my counterparts, me feel like boy, me feel like me do something good. I feel like I've created a good thing for universe, you know, for the universe. That's how I feel. And my memorable, most of my memorable moments is when I'm on tour, you know, when I'm on road doing me, doing my music, because I love music so much that when I'm doing my music, I'm in my joy, man. I'm, in, I'm, I'm like a man who's take a smoke off it, can't you feel it? When I'm doing my music, boy, I tell you, man, there's no words to express the joy that I feel when I'm doing me doing my music all right so we're winding down now um before we get to the last question i think it's important that we ask this question what advice would you give to emerging female artists you know especially those that's probably looking at a queen omega like yo that's who i want to be what advice would you give them well first um we need more positive females in the industry first of all so I would say to all those females who think, because I know we're living in a world where it's so much negative that for a female to come out, she would think that she need to sing smart and she need to show skin and that's what she's being told. But make a difference, prove them wrong. Show them, say that, listen, enough lioness out there, enough women out there who, because we are mothers and you know, I just want to encourage the females there, come out man, come out and do your thing. And even if you start as, you know, with the slackness, still try to make a change, try to make a transition because enough artists start doing slackness and they change into culture artists, they change into roots artists. Because, you know, sometimes you have to start, you have to start somewhere. But what I'm saying to my female, from, for the female artists, to the young artists who want to come out, keep it positive because we, we, we don't have enough negative. We don't have enough slackness out here. Keep it positive and make a difference. Make a change for the world. That's what we want to say. Okay, so we're doing this interview in Jamaica right now. Yeah. What is Queen Omega doing in Jamaica? Why are you here on the island? Making music. I'm just here making music as usual. I'm here working on my album because it's been so long. The fans, them, they, they, they're actually mad with me now. They've been complaining, they need an album, you know, and 
Jamaica is the place. You know, here is the place. Here is the place where I know I will meet with all my artists, brethren and sistering. And here is the place where I know I will get some of the toughest rhythms. And, of course, I want to touch stage show. Afi. You know, I mean, Jamaica, Jamaica have a vibe. Jamaica have a vibe. Even for my first time I've been here, I felt that connection. And being amongst, meeting with the people, I feel that connection too with the people. So I feel like at home. So I come home to work on an album <laughs> so I can have product because you know you must have product. You're an artist, you must have something to show. And you know, this album is going to be really, really sweet because it's, it's been so, it's been inside so, so long. It's just bubbling over now. It's just bubbling over, bubbling over, and so much being said on this album. So much big collaborations, big names. Not gonna let out, no. But big names on this album, big vibes, and 2020, look out. Different. You know, Miga, it's a joy. Any yeah. last words for, from you? Anything you wanna say? Anything I didn't touch on that you think is important to highlight? I think you did a good job with the interview. I think you did a good job with the questions and just look out. Keep your eyes open, keep your ears open because me there, me not drop out. And this is 